Hello everyone, I am Jyoti Bhong and in this video we are going to uh, see the introduction of the subject engineering geology, the scope of geology and its uh, subdivisions. So what is geology? So geo means earth and logos means study or science. So geology is nothing but the science of the earth or study of the earth. So this geology subject deals with the different aspects of the earth as a whole such as origin of the earth, age of the earth, the interior structure and history of the earth. Also it deals with the evolution and modification of various features like uh, rivers, mountains, lakes along with their causes and the materials making up the earth. So geology is a relatively recent subject. So in addition to its core branches, advances in geology in allied fields have led to a spe uh, specialized sciences. So we, we, uh, we will see those branches one by one. So here are uh, some main and allied branches of geology. So main branches are physical geology, mineralogy, petrology, structural geology, historical geology, which is also called as stratigraphy paleontology and economic geology and some allied branches of geology are engineering geology, mining geology, geophysics, geohydrology and geochemistry. Now uh, we will see those main and allied branches one by one in detail. So we will discuss about the main branch of uh, geology as physical geology. So physical geology is also described as a dynamic geology or geomorphology. So as the name suggests, it deals with different physical features of the earth such as mountains, plateaus, valleys, rivers, lakes, glaciers and volcanoes in terms of their origin and development. And also it deals with the different changes occurring on the sur earth surface like marine transgression, marine regression, formation or disappearance of the rivers, springs and lakes and also deals with the geological work of wind, glaciers, rivers, oceans, groundwater and their role in constantly molding the earth surface features. And also this physical geology deals with natural phenomena like landslides, earthquakes and weathering. So the main cause for surface changes is weathering. This is a natural phenomena resulting directly or indirectly due to changes in the atmosphere. Okay. So uh, civil engineers deals with structures like dams which are artificial barriers to the natural flow of rivers. So the proper understanding of geological work of a river and its features will lead to their better utilization for uh, engineering applications. The next branch is mineralogy. So as the name suggests, this mineralogy deals with the study of minerals. So minerals are basic units with which different rocks and ores of the earth are made up of. Detailed mode of formation, composition, occurrence, types, association, properties, uses, etc. of minerals form the subject matter of mineralogy. The knowledge in this branch of geology is necessary for a civil engineer because the properties of rocks uh, which he or she is going to make use in uh, use of in different ways are to a large extent contributed by the properties and composition of their constituent materials. For example, uh, sometimes quartzite and marble resembles uh, one another in shine, color and appearance. But quartzite by virtue of its mineral composition is very hard, tough, strong and durable. While marble uh, disintegrate and decomposes in a shorter pe period because of its mineral composition and properties. So mineralogy plays an important role uh, while uh, identifying these different minerals. The next and important branch of geology is petrology. So petrology deals with the study of rocks. The earth's crust also called lithosphere is made up of different types of rocks. So petrology deals with the mode of formation, structure, texture, composition, occurrence, types, etc. of the rocks. The composi uh, composition and textural characters of rocks primarily contribute to their inherent strength and durability. Rocks based on their stability can be used as foundation for dams, for tunneling and as materials for construction. 
Hence, this is the most important branch of geology from the civil engineering point of view. The next main branch of geology is structural geology. The rocks which form the earth's crust undergo various deformations, dislocations and uh, disturbances under the influence of tectonic forces. The result is the occurrence of different geological structures like folds, faults, joints uh, um, and unconformities in rock. The details of mode of formation, causes, types, classification, importance of these geological features form the subject matter of structural geology. So from the civil engineering point of view, it is an important as petrology because these geological structures modify the inherent physical characters of rocks, rendering them more suitable or unsuitable for civil engineering purposes. For example, uh, at a dam site, sedimentary rocks with upstream deep provide a desirable geological setup, while the same rock with a downstream deep make a geological setup not undesirable. So, this structural geology plays an important role in civil engineering point of view. Now, we will discuss about historical geology. The earth's surface was always uneven and provided suitable conditions for the deposition of sediments at some place or the other. Therefore, there are sedimentary rocks on the earth representing the entire period of the earth's history. The proper investigations of these rocks reveal the chronological sequence of formation of rocks, evaluation, migration, extinction details of different plant and animal life during the different periods of the earth's history. In addition, the climatic and geographical changes including tectonic events in the geological past can also be known from these investigations. So, this kind of study of the earth's history through the sedimentary rocks is called historical geology. It is also called as stratigraphy because this subject deals with the details and description of sedimentary rock sequences. So this is a major branch of geology having a lot of academic and applied importance. Now we will discuss about the paleontology. So if under favorable conditions animal or plant life gets embedded in sediments, it will be preserved partially or completely. So such relics and remnants of ancient life preserved in rocks by natural processes are known as fossils. So the details of the mode of formation of fossils, their types, their occurrence, etc. form the subject matter of paleontology. Like stratigraphy, this is also an important branch of geology. Though it is not of much importance from the civil engineering point of view, but as fossils are rare and throw much light on the past history of the earth, a civil engineer should know some details regarding them so that uh, he recognizes them as fossils. Whenever he comes across such uh, finds during his work, he should report the matter to the person concerned uh, for necessary action. Now uh, we will discuss about the economic geology. So uh, minerals can be grouped as general rock forming minerals and economic minerals. So some of the uh, economic minerals like talc, graphite, mica, asbestos, gypsum, magnesite, barites, diamond and gems are useful as such or as raw materials in different industries. And some others like hematite, chromite, galena, pyrolusite are used as ores for extraction of various metals, the uses of which are well known. The prosperity of a nation depends to a large extent on the rich reserves of economic mineral deposits it has. Uh, the details of their mode of formation, occurrence, classification, association, varieties, concentration, properties, uses, etc. form the subject matter of economic geology. So in this branch of geology, though it is a very important by virtue of its economic importance, is not relevant for civil, engineer, civil engineers for obvious reasons. It will be enough for them to know a few details as in the case of fossils. 
so that they will uh, not be ignorant uh, of them as and when they come across these in course of their civil engineering works like tunneling and road cutting so each of the uh, foregoing branch deals with specific subject matters and comprises the main uh, branches of uh, uh, geology proper so further based on application of geological knowledge in other fields there are many other allied branches collectively called earth sciences so we will discuss those allied branches one by one so the first branch is engineering geology so this deals with the application of geological knowledge in the field of civil engineering for execution of safe stable and economic constructions like dams bridges and tunnels so this is the very important branch uh, of uh, geology the next branch is mining geology so this deals with the application of geological knowledge in the field of mining a mining engineer is interested in the mode and extent of occurrence of ores their association tenor properties etc it is also necessary to know other physical parameters like depth direction inclination uh, which uh, can be called as strike and dip uh, respectively thickness and reserves of ore bodies for efficient utilization so such details of mineral exploration estimation and exploitation are dealt with in mining geology the importance of geology in mining may be cited with uh, some examples uh, sometimes uh, Uh, the lores or seams of economic mineral suddenly get terminated so this might happen either due to the natural limit of the ore body or due to faulting the geological studies will solve these problems and if it is due to faulting the continuity can be uh, traced by ascertaining the direction and extent of displacement caused by faulting so the geological knowledge helps in planning the method of mining or querying a deposit in a advantageous way the next uh, branch we are going to discuss is geophysics the study of physical properties like density and magnetism of the earth or its part to know its interior forms the subject matter of geophysics so broadly it is subdivided into general or uh, pure geophysics and exploration or applied geophysics so pure geophysics deals with general aspects of the earth as a whole and exploration geophysics deals with the study of upper layers of the earth's crust in order to solve some civil engineering problems to locate oil and uh, gold deposits to locate groundwater to explore and estimate the ore deposits etc of underground so there are different types of geophysical investigations based on the physical property utilized like gravity method seismic methods magnetic methods so since uh, these are quickly and easily done on the surface large areas can be investigated economically and efficiently so uh, we can say engineering geophysics is a branch of exploration geophysics which aims at solving civil engineering problems by interpreting subsurface geology of the areas concerned the geophysical investigations are very useful in solving foundation problems alignment of structures leakage problems along canals locating building materials like stones and uh, electricity uh, resistivity methods and seismic refraction methods are commonly used in solving civil engineering problems geohydrology so this may also be called as uh, hydrogeology so geohydrology deals with occurrence movement and the nature of groundwater in an area it has applied importance because groundwater has many advantages over surface water so this branch is closely related to geology because the very existence movement of groundwater are directly related to porosity permeability structure texture and composition of the surface and underground rocks so in general geological geophysical and hydrological studies are together taken up 
for groundwater investigations. And uh, the last branch is geochemistry. So this branch is relatively more recent and deals with the occurrence, distribution, abundance, mobility, etc. of different elements in the Earth's crust. Uh, it is not important from the civil engineering point of view. So uh, we have seen uh, various uh, main branches of geology and, uh, as well as the alert branches of geology. Now we will uh, discuss about the scope of geology. So geology is one of the most interesting and useful subject. So uh, this is the only subject which gives information about the earth. Some of the details regarding its academic and applied importance uh, we will discuss about those. So the study of details of academic significance of geology is not within the purview of the subject of engineering geology. But at the same time, it is worth knowing from curiosity and interest point of view some of the unbelievable and uh, sterling facts about our earth and its history. So uh, we will see uh, some of the um, facts. So the first fact I'm going to uh, say here is the Himalayas, the tallest mountains of the present day are relatively of recent geological age whose growth was witnessed by man. So they are made up of marine formations suggesting that their place was once occupied by a narrow sea called Tethys. The next fact is in the geological past the earth has experienced intense cold periods known as glaciation. During such periods uh, the globe was enveloped by snow to a considerable extent. So the latest period of glaciation worm occurred around 20,000 BC. The Indian landmass at present does not have even a single volcano, but the same country had experienced very intense volcanic activity nearly 60 million years back when a lava flowed far and wide, resulting in a formation of volcanic rocks over an area of 5 lakh square miles. The magnitude of eruption was such that a few of the individual lava flows were more than a hundred feet thick. The another fact is the uh, it will be difficult to believe that the distribution of continents and oceans of today was altogether different in the past. In the beginning, there was a single landmass called Pangaea, which was different, uh, which was surrounded by an ocean called. Uh, Panthalsa. So Pangaea was uh, girdled in the middle by a deep narrow river or sea called Tethys and the northern and southern parts of Pangaea were called Angara and Gondwana lands respectively. So these southern parts of Pangaea uh, was also called as a Laurasia. So this Gondwana subsequently split at the end of the uh, Paleozoic era into smaller blocks with later drifted in different directions giving rise to the present day continents of America, Australia, Antarctica and the uh, Indian subcontinent. So this unique geological event of the past is called the continental drift. So there are various facts like this you will come to know about this when you uh, go through this uh, subject in detail. So uh, in the next video we are going to see uh, those uh, different branches of geology in detail one by one. Thank you.